Hello, welcome back to Ben Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I want to point it out um, how you could um, load a module called SkyPy. It's a um, it's kind of like a scientific module that normally people uh, who understand Python programming use to do scientific um, calculations and whatever. And you can basically load it into Blender via this uh, um, Spreadshock add-on. Of course, you don't actually need the nodes, but the nodes for me is a kind of a way to encapsulate the kind of an idea or kind of like a functions and you can interact with it, you know. Uh, in this case, we are really just generating this uh, 2D circle using Spreadshock and this uh, SkyPy uh, module. Um, this is actually something that I borrow from Carl Walt. This is from Spreadshock GitHub. There's a lot of gems here and I, I really have to point this out. This is from around a month ago. Carl Walt is actually uh, finding a kind of showing you can bring in like a SkyPy module into um, Spreadshock environment which is node based and kind of uh, use a it can be very very interesting you can basically generate like a image processing something that's kind of like a, what's a blender compositing is doing but you can type in the script yourself um, you see in this case doing the blurring and stuff and yeah, in this this is the example that I borrowed. This is the circle example. Um, what you need to do is basically, first of all, um, you need to install Python separately outside Blender, uh, because in Blender you can't do like a, you can't easily install module yet. Blender actually comes with a bunch of modules already, like NumPy. NumPy is also used for scientific um, calculation. Um, but it's, it doesn't have SkyPy, so you need to install the SkyPy separately. And in this case, I'm using um, Anaconda. Um, just search for Anaconda Python, and using Anaconda, you can easily install like uh, all a bunch of modules with the Python itself, and like install it cleanly into an environment that you can you can load separately. But that's gonna be outside of uh, Blender, and you want to ins uh, kind of a uh, point it out well anyhow this is um, this script is actually inside this is for the script node inside um, Spreadshop and this is the parameters this this guy is responsible for all these parameters you see up here and these parameters um, will generate all this uh, interface these guys all the the script um, you can copy paste the script from here you just need to change the SkyKit path and this is the path inside my computer. It's a user, my name, this is Anaconda, this is the environment, this is for Python 35, 3.5, library, Python, side packages. You want to point it out to this path. And then once you set the path correctly, once you do that, and then you can use this um, <coughs> kind of, excuse me, kind of function uh, from Sky Image to draw line, polygon, circle, ellipse, etc. And you can use uh, this function, for example, just circle with the center x, center y parameter with the radius, and then whatever it is. I'm, I'm not like, a, I don't know, I haven't used SkyKit actually, uh, but I know there are heaps of examples out there just using SkyKit and Python to generate an image. And in this case, really, we generating in inside Blender, and this is the result. This image doesn't have any um, anti-aliasing, so it's a uh, very aliased. But we can work with work that out. Anyhow, so put everything together into a script node. You can have a nodes, and this node's actually quite interactive. Um, let's see if I change this uh, x and y. This is actually pretty interactive. See, less than a second. It's even faster if I'm not recording. You can change the radius, for example, and you can change the RGB, of course, you know. This is all seems familiar to you. Yeah, yes, it is should be familiar. You can do the same thing and render it out in Blender um, if you use a circle, but this is kind of interesting. In fact, if you 
if you like programming and then just change a couple of code and then update it you should I think get a different result you should get a let me reload I think I need to reload see I can draw another circle and this circle I can make it slightly different see here there's an offset to the value um, let's say I change the red like that See, I can have two circle with different color. Um, the X and Y of the small circle doesn't change because I put it on the 2020 here. Um, oh, actually, the radius follows the, the big one slightly, but there's an offset. So that's kind of thing that you can do with a with Python script. This is if you like kind of to type certain like a code maybe algorithm once you have like a fine you, um, if you're like more expert um, using Python you can really bring in all your Python skills put it into the script like this and then turn it into nodes maybe share it with us um, and yeah it's gonna be pretty interesting uh, what I did here from this node is I putting it out and use the color in and use the texture viewer light I use this color in to get the alpha value and this is the output which is this guy what's interesting is that we can also use all kind of uh, spread chalk nodes for example in this case I have random value responsible for XY and this one responsible for RGB so if I just plug this in this is for the color and I make updates every frame updates it's gonna generate different color and this is like using stretch of nodes and if I use this uh, X and Y I can also randomize the position of the circle so yeah you can also randomize the radius of course that's uh, not a big deal but I think this is really very really, uh, interesting that you can do this <clears throat> using both like a Python module from external from outside of Blender and then what's a Blender offer you like all this kind of interface and even better is that this is the like Spreadshock environment, Spreadshock nodes. You can bring that uh, into compositing as well. So from this image being generated, you can um, you can blur it, for example, using the compositor environment. And then if you render it out, you should get like a, this, like a blur. I think that's really cool. Um, I think this guy is also kind of, uh, you can make it interactive and real time. I don't know, I think a viewer node can do it. So that's kind of interactive. So images. There you go. That's everything is interactive. It's changing the value, changing the changing this guy, and then this guy is doing further processing, like blurring this image. You can uh, you can also render it out like as an animations. Um, it's very easy. Just you know just click on animation it's, it's gonna run this compositing um, setup um, yeah so I think that's like a win-win situations and uh, everything is node based and you have script you can encapsulate it into a node and you have this interactivity and you have this result um, showing to you I don't know I think you can even use like webcam and then do like, like um, neural network um, I don't know what it's called, uh, machine learning stuff inside Blender, you know, Blender is becoming like um, your exoskeleton, you know, like uh, if you imagine like um, you have a lot of ideas, you want to put it together into one place, you can use Blender, you know, Blender is 3D package as well and you can animate and you can do a lot of things and turn everything into like a visualization or animations or you can drive a robot using Blender, of course. Yeah, so yeah, I guess that's just an idea. Uh, let let me let me know what you think. If uh, if you have any question, I'll try to answer it in the comment section. Um, yeah, thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.